So in these times, it's maybe a little bit delicate to speak about death. Because there are currently many people dying. And yet there are always many people dying. And one day it will be our time, or at least for this body, to go. And today I was walking on the Rhine, along the Rhine, in the sun, and I really just had this feeling that we in the West, we don't have any sense of inclusiveness of death. We somehow push death away until it's just happening, right? But when you travel to the East, and I've been many times in India, you see death everywhere. You see people get burned, dead bodies get burned on the guts. In some traditions, I think it's the six, they even put the dead bodies high up so the dead bodies get eaten by birds. In Bali, you see huge ceremonies by carrying the dead bodies through the villages and people dancing and crying. And then the dead bodies get burned. So somehow death is very visible in the Eastern countries. Whereas here, where do you see dead bodies? They get somehow carried away, hid away, burned somewhere secret, as if death doesn't exist here. And of course you can wonder, is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? And somehow it's not only our society that kind of doesn't show death, but it's also in the medical uh, education, the, the medical approach is to keep bodies alive. And where do you learn in the medical school? to let a body or a person die in dignity just because she's old enough or the, the body is very sick and it's time to just let them die in dignity. But be, maybe be, to be able to do that, we need to have some clarity of what dies and what doesn't die? What is somehow immortal? Because if we keep being totally identified with this body, with this mind, and we consider that the only me that we know, then we might get very scared when it's about dying and we cling to wanting to be alive forever. Yet in, if we start to investigate in this quest, what dies? And is there something in me that stays immortal, eternal? And if you find some answers, not just from cognition, from the mind, but really inside, you find some answers, clear, true answers for yourself. then you might find that very seed on the bottom of your being that has an immortal quality, that is, that has always been, and that will be when this body falls off. But I'm not here to tell you that. You have to discover that for yourself.
And one strong experience I had in this regard, besides of my meditation experiences, where which meditation can lead you deep in these quests. One of these experiences happened last year when my mother passed. And she was a, quite an aware woman. And for me, it was very important to be there for her. And she was in a hospice in the end, in a dying home. And it was very beautiful because I could really prepare her for this transition and she was very open for it. I sang, I was playing some music, I danced and sometimes she danced with me in, her, in the bed with the limbs that she could still move. I put some oil here and opened the Bindu Chakra. In the Eastern tradition, they say it's the best way to exit the body in the Bindu Chakra, which is a chakra here behind on the head. So I always open here a little bit, caressed her there. And in the end, the miracle happened that one morning I held her and she went in that moment and I held her in my hands, her head and her hand and there she went. And somehow it was a feeling that we both knew this was the last moment she could go when I was there. Afterwards, I would have left. So she, or it just took that moment. So of course, it's, it, it's a great gift for me and maybe also for her. But the thing that struck me later, later in the afternoon when I went back home by train, I really wondered, well, she was here a couple hours ago, like she was here breathing and her heart still pumping. And then she's gone. And then in the train, I ask, where are you now? Where are you now? It was so mysterious. And then the answer came instantly. And the answer came through the heart and it was saying like, I'm right here, right here in your heart. And it was so strong, direct, this I'm here in your heart. And I could feel it, yes, this is the truth. And she has always been there and now she's also there. So this realm becomes a bit difficult to speak. But this was another direct experience of that there is something internal within you. And we can meet everybody, the living bodies, but also the dead souls. We can meet them here right here and now but somehow we have to what i call develop uh, extra sensorium an extra sensory awareness yeah because we cannot go with our ordinary senses and say hey what does she say and you know how does it smell it's it's somehow another sense that we have to develop to feel that, to receive that, to perceive that. And this sensory is maybe can be compared by intuition, by a deep sense of being, and by sensing the emptiness, the spaciousness, the isness. And then somehow, if you have such experiences, and these experiences can come to you everywhere, in nature, it can be a strike of consciousness, it can be in meditation, it can be during sex, it can be in yoga, in a silent time, or even in an ordinary situation. 
But if you get this kind of experiences, you have another reference point in life. And also when death comes knocking on your door. Because somehow you know that there is something in you that will not die. Or in fact, you are that which doesn't die. You are this immortal being living in this body-mind organism. But again, I don't want to tell you what it is, but I would like to encourage you to find that out for yourself and inquire a little bit in your very nature so that when death comes knocking on your door, you're not so afraid because you're totally identified with this body, but maybe you have another developed another deeper, larger being that can be with it all and that can even maybe celebrate that moment of transition. So have a lovely time in this body and be ready when it's your time. Bye-bye.